Benjamin Riley with Cooperative Communications. It's May 15th. I'm in Calgary. I'm speaking with Jeffrey Betts from IBM. Uh, is it IBM Health? Uh, I'm in IBM's healthcare unit, yes. Great. So you gave a, a keynote speech earlier today, right? Mm -hmm. And so you were talking about a computer program uh, that can take tons of information and then actually present it as, um, as facts. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? It's Watson, isn't it? Yeah, IBM's uh, technology for deep question answering is called Watson. And uh, that's what it does. It answers questions. So, I mean, how, how can you compare that to, say, Google? I mean, you can type yeah. in a search to Google right. and you get a response back. So what's the difference? Uh, well, Watson uh, uses search algorithms like Google at the front end of its process, but um, uh, it really does uh, a thousand percent more than Google in interpreting what your question is, uh, speculating on uh, hypothesizing about potential answers, going out and finding evidence that, in parallel, it will go out and try and find evidence for the hypotheses that it generated and come back and show you its ranked prediction of the answers, showing you the probability of it feels that it's found the right answer for you. And so, I mean, this was first uh, used on Jeopardy. I mean, you guys use that as kind of a showpiece. If it can mm -hmm. do Jeopardy, then it can do all these other things. So why Jeopardy? Uh, well, Jeopardy is a grand challenge in the realm of artificial intelligence and specifically in deep question answering within artificial intelligence uh, because uh, the, uh, the linguistic capabilities needed uh, to compete in Jeopardy are extremely sophisticated. It's, uh, the Jeopardy, uh, it's, its model uh, it gives you the answer and you're supposed to guess the question, right? Uh, and, uh, it gives its, its clue often in very arcane language, sometimes with puns, sometimes with uh, allusions, innuendos, a uh, very sophisticated use of the English language, uh, which historically computers have been actually not that good at computing <laughs> no. over, right? No, computer language and human language are two different That's languages. That's right. Computers are very strong uh, around structured data, data that we've already curated and we've already decided what category this piece of information is and we put it in a table. Uh, and computers historically uh, have, have uh, optimized that. Uh, Watson is the first instance of a new kind of computing technology that we call cognitive computing that really works the way that people's minds work. Right? And so the Jeopardy was a, was a stepping stone and that was a success, correct? Correct. And what year was that? Uh, 2011. Okay, so that's not that long ago. I mean, that's pretty recent still. Yeah, it's, we've been working for a couple of years now to uh, take Watson out oh. of the game playing mode and apply it in a couple of key industrial domains. Uh, we're working with financial services companies, we're working with governments, but uh, my focus is around healthcare and adapting Watson to support physicians in making diagnoses and treatment decisions. And so, how would a doctor use Watson? Uh, well, uh, we're working with a number of key oncology. Um, organizations in the United States to figure that out. Uh, it, the problem that doctors face is that uh, despite the fact they go to school for seven or ten years and do fellowships and are deep experts in their field, the velocity of change of the evidence in their field is changing faster than humans can possibly consume it. Uh, over a million articles abstracted in PubMed last year. So you have this corpus of knowledge, the evidence which doctors actually need to do proper diagnosis and proper treatment is cognitively unavailable to them now, uh, simply uh, because of this fact of the wave of new, new facts. Uh, Watson acts as an assistant to them. It reads everything, it barks up every tree, it re reads every uh, journal and every story in every journal and remembers it. And uh, then when the doctor is at the point of making a decision, he can compare the facts of the patient to this corpus of evidence that Watson has already digested, and Watson will help find the relevant facts pertinent to that specific patient. And so I'm a doctor, and I'm using Watson. I have a patient, and I say my patient has these symptoms, and these are some of the informations I know, blood mm -hmm. pressure or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then Watson goes through, and it does this big processing, and then says, I think it could be this, this, or this, and this is my statistical percentages of what I think. It ranks and, the confidence of its answers, yes. And so then the doctor makes his professional opinion based on both what he knows and then what this computer program is uh, supporting. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's a decision support tool. It's not a decision making tool. Okay. So uh, physicians can use Watson to look at evidence for recommendations that they would not have uh, initially anticipated and they can learn from that. And so is there a risk that Watson might replace a doctor? Uh, I don't think in our lifetimes, quite frankly. Um, it's certainly not a design point for how we're building Watson. It's uh, 
physicians are experts, but we're in a world where even experts need expert systems to support them. And that's the design point for me. And so where's the future of Watson going? I mean, right now you're working with healthcare. I mean, you say you're also doing government and financial. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you guys looking past that as well? Uh, yeah, we're, I mean, the, the imagination runs off in all directions when you think about a computer that uh, you can talk to, a um, computer that can listen to you, a uh, computer that can reason over unstructured data, text, that can read everything, and, uh, and find pertinent facts in it to help you make decisions. So any domain is open, I think. Cool. And, uh, you know, I mean, we were having a conversation earlier about um, thinking and the definition of thinking mm -hmm. and thought. And so, I mean, this is, this is a computer that can think. Uh, well, it certainly uh, exhibits characteristics of thinking, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it goes about it in a purely computing way, a stochastic, uh, probabilistic way. It uh, doesn't work the same way that our wetware works, um, but the results are similar. And it's, it's, you know, there's no concern that, uh, you know, Watson has a personality or anything. I mean, this is just... Searching? Uh, only the personalities that we project upon it. I mean, uh, you call it a he. Uh, the the uh, chairman and CEO of our company, Gina Rometty, calls it a she, <laughs> right? Uh, some people call it an it. Uh, we have a tendency to anthropomorphize these things, right? But, uh, cool. And, and so uh, can you talk about the effort it went into creating Watson? Yeah. Uh, well, Watson is a product of IBM's research division, uh, which is... Uh, a group of maybe two or three thousand PhDs in eight or ten labs around the world. Wow. We make a huge investment in, in basic and applied research every year. And uh, Watson was one of the recent large projects. We started in 2006 with a team of about 20 PhDs. And, and, and so, I mean, these guys have been working on it a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a short time, but it's still it's a pretty long, intensive time. Mm -hmm. And now it's branched off. So, like, your health portion of that mm -hmm. is a team totally dedicated to health. Correct. Right? And then you have one for government and one for financial. Correct. Um, so is it approximately 20 people in each one? No. Uh, I, actually, I don't know the number of people in IBM's Watson software division now, but it would be in the hundreds. Cool. And uh, is it possible for people to see Watson on Jeopardy? I mean, is that uh, uh, you can there If you uh, go to Google and you use the search algorithm and go to YouTube, you can see dozens and dozens of... Uh, uh, videos about uh, 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 Watson competing at Jeopardy and also about Watson being adapted for clinical decision support in healthcare and about Watson being adapted for uh, customer support in financial services. Is there um, any opportunity or anything in the, the, your guys' um, future, or Watson's future, hmm. to be taking in uh, additional information like, let's say, video feeds or cameras or photos or other information that's not just articles? Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, Currently, Watson does only text analytics. Uh, IBM uh, has a number of research projects around image analysis and, and uh, uh, image comparison and those kinds of things. And um, perhaps in the future, those two things will come together. You could envisage uh, 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 an image where Watson looking at electrocardiograms and angiograms in support of a cardiologist trying to uh, diagnose a heart condition. Um, but we're not there yet. Okay. And you know, is, is Watson something that needs to be connected to the internet, or is this uh, connected to a private centers? Um, yeah, good question. Uh, when it played Jeopardy, it was not connected to the internet. It had a corpus of knowledge that was loaded into it, about 200 million pages equivalent, and it competed based uh, on that. But uh, um, obviously, to make it a useful tool in different domains, you'd want it attached to big data. You want it streaming uh, with access to the latest, uh, be they facts or be they other, other kind of uh, uh, patient information that may be coming from different sources. Is there any concern over privacy? Uh, privacy is obviously at the heart of, uh, of any system that you use in healthcare, and Watson's absolutely no different than that. So the protection of personal health information is uh, part of the design point. Uh, from uh, the ground up in Watson for Healthcare. Well, I want to thank you for having an interview with me. And uh, I know it was definitely informative for myself and the internet audience. Uh, and, you know, one of the things uh, before we go, when I was listening to your presentation this morning, and you're talking about computers that can think and make decisions and help us and, you know, these kind of uh, super assistants, uh, I mean, to me, the, it's like the future's here. You know, I mean, like everything that we see in all of these sci fi things mm -hmm. um, are here now. And I mean, maybe some of them are still in the research phase mm -hmm. or still being panned out a little bit, but I mean, they are working, they are being tested, uh, and then soon they're going to be widespreadly used. 
So, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely a really eye-opening experience to, to have somebody like you come down and talk about uh, what's coming out of the workshop. Uh, well, the future is here. It's just not evenly distributed. Who said that, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I'm quoting somebody whose name I forget. But um, uh, thanks very much for having us. It's been great to be part of your event. All right. Thank you very much. Join the conversation next year as more cities become data-driven, become a community partner. Contact us at info at abctech.ca.